some very important information related to the current economic events has unfolded and I need to bring that to you. The first thing I want to talk about is the Fed's corruption. I have been covering this recently. I wanted to touch on it again today, give you some updates. The second thing I want to look at is real estate. You've seen the prices going sky high. I want to give you some information on that. And the third thing we need to discuss is China's crisis. Some people have called this Lehman 2.0. Others have said it's nothing. Don't worry. I'm going to give you some really, really key intel. So stick with me. Let's go. I've been covering this. You need to know what's going on at a deeper level, though. Fed officials own securities. It was buying, raising its uh, questions about its conflicts. You can see right here some of these details, uh, some of which I've covered previously, but some other stuff as well. Uh, Rosengren held between 150,000 to 800,000 worth of real estate investment trusts that own mortgage backed securities. He made 37 separate trades in the four REITs while the Fed purchased almost $700 billion of the mortgage backed securities, directly benefiting from the actions of the Federal Reserve. Powell held between 1.25 million and 2.5 million of municipal bonds in family trusts, over which he says, he has no control. They were just a small portion of his total reported assets. While the bonds were pr purchased prior to 2019, they were held while the Fed bought $21 billion in municipal bonds. Okay, more on that. And then the Richmond Fed president held $1.35 million to $3 million in individual corporate bonds purchased before 2020. They included the bonds of Pepsi, Home Depot, and Eli Lilly. The Fed last year opened a corporate bond buying facility that bought $46 billion of corporate bonds. Now, who did they buy? What kind of stocks did they buy? I'll show you in just a second. I'm sure you know already. But essentially saying they didn't violate any code of conduct. They didn't do anything wrong. The way that they did, did these purchases, everything's all good. Okay. Among the questions, should the Fed have been banned from you know, actually being able to buy these? Buying and selling the same assets the Fed itself was buying when it dramatically widened the type of assets that it would purchase. The Fed's own code of, code of conduct says the officials should be, quote, should be careful to avoid any dealings or other conduct, conduct that might convey even an appearance of conflict between their personal interests, the interests of the system, and the public's interest. What does that mean? Language is vague, so they can do whatever they need to. Look, all right, let, let's just touch on this first before I get into it. This is back in 2020, but I've covered this so many times before and I've talked about it a hundred times. Federal Reserve buys bonds of Apple, Verizon and others. Apple. Apple. This is a company that is valued somewhere at the market cap of $2.25 trillion. I haven't checked it recently, but that's approximately the last time I left it at $2.25 trillion. And the federal government thinks that this is okay for the Federal Reserve to come in and buy it up. But they didn't say anything. The Federal Reserve just decided they were going to buy the bonds. And then you have people benefiting from that. Okay, because they're backstopping the losses. No worries. In addition to Apple and Verizon, recipients were AT&T, 3M, Adobe, Toyota, Volkswagen, and Daimler. All of these companies here getting a bailout from the Federal Reserve reserve okay like what What was it 46 billion is that what it said here now i lost that spot so like i mean the amount of money that they poured into that is truly significant never seen anything like it before after years of being squeaky clean the federal reserve is surrounded by controversy i mean what are you talking about squeaky clean what about 16 trillion dollar bailout that you gave to institutions around the world that isn't even officially on your books at all, isn't recorded anywhere that the public has access to, isn't still today, isn't admitted by your institution, 
and we're being told that they're squeaky clean? What about the foundations of this institution set up in 1913 by the biggest individuals in the financial industry at that time? Making this all happen to the benefit of those groups. I mean, it doesn't get any dirtier than that. Anyway, that's besides the point. Let's look at this under a different light, however. The Federal Reserve is not doing anything, these individuals that work for the Fed, is not doing anything different than what every other investor is doing. Is Powell buying municipal bonds different than some other investor out there? Maybe, you know, if there was some insider trading where he bought the day before things skyrocketed, just like Rosengren, just like Kaplan. I mean, they're buying over a period of time. The problem with this is the fact that the Federal Reserve is printing money and, and creating this mess in the first in the first place. That's the problem with it. Not that you've got some people taking advantage. There's a lot of people taking advantage. Even BlackRock said, we're just going to look at whatever the Fed buys and buy that ourselves. I mean, come on. This is crazy. Let's summarize this in the Money GPS Insights. The Fed is printing money right now. And then you've got individuals at the Fed who are simply buying the shares of these companies or the you know type of asset that is being bailed out. And now suddenly in the news, there's these ethics concerns, but everybody knew this was going on anyway. Suddenly it's coming to light and it's rather suspicious. Investors, watch out because there have not been any new highs since these revelations have come to light. It's interesting. Let's start here with the real estate with this fun one. Rust Belt Cities, Rust Belt Cities pitch for a hot housing market, free homes. The mayor of Monison is trying to reverse the city's long decline by giving away vacant homes to people willing to fix them up. It's a lot like what you see in places like Italy that are giving away homes for one euro saying, if you're going to come in, you renovate the place, you can basically have it for free. And I get this. I totally get this. I hope that this is successful. You've got a vacant home. It's not doing anybody any good. You give it to them for free. They renovate it. Hopefully the neighborhood gets revitalized. You got more jobs. Somebody's got to renovate that. That's creating a job. See, that's better, better than the Federal Reserve printing money and buying bonds of Apple. I mean, nobody is going to gain from that. No real economy. There's no real economic benefit from the Federal Reserve doing that. This, on the other hand, you can see a benefit. Okay? I mean, you've got areas that the home prices are extremely depressed, still not recovering from the boom and bust of the housing crisis. Speaking of which, Americans haven't been this down on the housing market since 1982. I don't need to tell you that the prices are up to levels. We have just, we've never seen this anything close. A little reprieve, dwindling share, say that now is a good time to buy a U.S. home despite record low financing. 2.86% is very close to a record low for a 30-year fixed mortgage, but the prices are so out of control today that most people are saying, I just can't do it. And I completely understand. Now, this is where we get into the real deal. The real deal, holy field. Look at it. China. What's happening here is, in fact, a very big crisis. Look at this. And by the way, yesterday, I'll link to it. At the end of this video, I covered all of Evergrande. Who is Evergrande? What is the company? $300 billion of debt. All, all of that will be covered in that other video. 
so I don't have to get into this one. It will be linked at the end of this video. So stay, stick with me, okay? China adds $14 billion in cash as Evergrande's pain roils the markets. Injection of short-term cash is the highest since February. Avoiding, avoiding a liquidity squeeze is the absolute priority, according to Sock Chen. We knew that. I think it's pretty clear. Look at it. China injected more cash into its banking system and a sign authorities are seeking to avert a funding squeeze amid a seasonal rise in financing demand and intensifying the debt crisis at China Evergrande. The People's Bank of China added the equivalent of $14 billion of funds on a net basis through seven days and 14 day reverse repo. And, and you know, the reverse repo, by the way, just like what the Fed is doing, this is how you make it happen. You need to push this money into the system one way, shape, or form. Today was the first time in this month it added more than $10 billion of short-term liquidity in the banking system on a single day. So you know that there's problems. There are problems right now, okay? Looking at this, you could see, just showing you a huge spike because they need that to get out into the system as fast as possible. Just comparing it, this is 2021, and there have been days that were higher, but certainly, uh, you know, doesn't happen too often. So we'll see what happens. Avoiding a uh, systemic liquidity, liquidity squeeze is absolute priority for the PBOC, the People's Bank of China, and it has means to do so. A Lehman-style financial market meltdown is not our top concern, of course, but an extended and severe economic slowdown seems more probable. So could that be the case? Could we be entering a moment in which we have a severe economic slowdown? How much do all of these liquidity injections, like how much is that actually going to do? We'll see. China's corporate debt default uh, defaults trigger concern of a broader crisis. Recent delinquencies by some state-owned Chinese firms have resulted in sell-off of their bonds. You know, it's not just one company that has problems. We're talking about these SOEs, that's the state-owned enterprises. There have been many. I've been covering this for quite a while. And this is just one. Shares of Industrial Bank Co. and China Everbright Bank fell more than 3% on Friday. An index tracking the stocks of state-owned enterprises lost 0.8%. Four days of losses. Okay, you can see what's been going on. Not good. Looking at weakness here, the resurgence of credit stress in recent months as several high-profile firms come under financial strain. I talked about this, and this was highlighted by Lance Roberts in the interview I did with him a few weeks ago. He's the, uh, the gentleman from Real Investment Advice, and he said... The biggest problem is always going to be a credit crisis. That's the next one that we could face. He didn't say specifically where is China, it's Evergrande. No, no. But he said that's the problem. The debt is simply too, too much. Okay. There's more details in this article if you're interested in reading it. Look at this. China's junk bond yields. Look at this. Look at it. Skyrocketing again. Okay. We saw this and by the way, it's, it's not done yet. You could see what the direction it's heading. Haven't seen anything like this since the financial crisis. People should be concerned about what's happening and the debt market is telling you. And then just to give you a little comparison here, 85% of the US high yield market currently yields below the US CPI. So we're talking about a negative real yield in hard to tell, about 85, oh, 85%. There you go. 85% of the market. This wasn't the case just a little while ago. And this is, you know, uh, compared to the CPI, which of course we know is not the real actual indicator. But anyway, now I found this comparison to be interesting. Iron ore futures and then Evergrande's bonds. So as the company is basically heading closer and closer to default, you're looking at iron ore. Why? a construction material that's needed to build these properties. Evergrande builds properties. If Evergrande is going down, the suggestion here is that there's less of these materials to be needed. That's a suggestion. Who knows? Because if Evergrande's not building them, will somebody else build them? Or are the ghost cities gonna remain ghost 
for a while, which by the way, some people are actually living in them now. China officially applies to join the CPTPP, that's a, that's a tongue twister, as the US increasingly isolated in trade moves cements country's leadership in global trade as the US increasingly isolated. That actually is true, though you're seeing the, the US clearly being dominant in many aspects. Things are definitely changing. This, um, you know, say what you want about, I won't give my opinion, but say what you want about the trade agreements. The, all I want to look at is the economic factor here. And you could see that China is is dominating in, in many sense, uh, but also extending their hand and saying, hey, let's partner together. Let's do this. The you know the Belt and Road and all these different initiatives that they have, they're clearly changing pace from where they were before. Now they're going for the top spot. There's a lot going on in China as well, a lot of crackdowns. This happens to be one individual tycoon has fortune slashed by $27 billion in one of the biggest wealth drops ever as China cracked down on the tech firms. This is, uh, I believe is pronounced Pin Duo Duo, PDD. And the guy lost $27 billion. I mean, that seriously has got to hurt. Uh, he's, he's not hurting because still a multi-billionaire. But the point here is not everything goes up forever. Things can change. I showed you previously the tech stocks in China and how far down they have come. People have tried to come in and buy up some of those losses, try to buy that dip, and it dipped even further. So we'll see what happens. But I'm just trying to give you sort of all the different angles of this to give you a little perspective as to what is happening. If you want to know everything, you've got to be an insider. The insiders is my way to get to you directly. Five days a week, I'm going to send you the video of the day. All you got to do is sign up right here for free at this card or at themoneygps.com to support the channel. You got to give that like button. If you want to help me out with the algorithms, just hit that like button. Doing so will increase your portfolio by a whole whopping thumbs up. If that makes any sense. Hit that like button. I appreciate it. If you haven't seen this video yet, you've got to check it out. Click it and I'll see you there.